came out of directed to, I was doing a lot of uh, big musicals in like community theaters, like in Battle Creek and in different, and, uh, and then I stopped directing because I gave a bad note, the kind of notes that made me have to come back to directing that I used to hear directors give when I was sitting there and said, that's the kind of note I gave and I quit directing. And it was a note that, that an actor couldn't use. And I feel if you can't give an actor a note that's useful in some way, and if he doesn't comprehend it or she doesn't comprehend it, then make it accessible to them in some way. Don't just throw something at them. So when I started hearing directors that I was, I was I've done over 100 plays, Kaus. That's a lot. That's all I wanted to a do was 100 plays, and, and I went beyond that. But directors were saying things to actors, and I was like, they need a director that's going to try to give them so, a little more respect than that. And, and mm -hmm. so I would, uh, you know, I, I, I was thinking about coming back to directing and I really wanted to do it with August's work, but he had had his stable, his, his right. stable of, of directors. So I was, I just sit back and August kept asking me things like we'd be in tech rehearsal. And one day, and then I said to him, when I direct it, that's what I'm going to do. He said, well, when are you going to direct it? Direct my stuff. I said, when I'm on the list, he said, you're on the top of the list. <laughs> and then I was directing three months later. That's incredible. You know, we, we reached we reached out to some of the actors from Jitney to just give us some some thoughts on working with you. Um, and I'll share I'll share from I will share bits and pieces. But I want to be clear, there's no time to share all of them, though. I'd love to because not uh, not a single person had anything but praise, as you can imagine. And something Michael Potts, who played Turnbow in our production, said was that Ruben never let any of us off the hook uh, from rehearsal to closing. He made us climb that mountain to meet August every day. And, it, it, and Michael went on to say he's never been more inspired as an actor, as a black man, and as a human being than when working with you to see the dedication and the honesty. And I think part of what you're saying is, while you were an actor watching and experiencing uh, directors, you were doing what you needed to do with your skill and your craft, but you were also saying like, man, if I could get my hands on it, I'd be, I, I, I could be a, an ally, an asset, helpful and move that forward. And I think you have done that based on a lot of the responses that we got from our cast members on Jitney. Um, I, I guess the, the, the second part of that question, Ruben, is do you have a hard time when you're reading a script, let's say you're reading uh, a new Dominic Morso play. Um, are you thinking about it as an actor? Are you thinking about it as a director? Let me say this, because I'm, I'm thinking about what Potts said, and Potts is one of the finest actors in, on American stage today. And I, and I say this in all honesty, and to get that kind of praise from him, uh, it means a lot. But, but let me say this, because I want to add a little, little something onto that. We, as African-American people, have no time to squander. We don't, I, we don't have time to just entertain if we're not enlightening. It took, it took people who worked very hard very hard to diminish who we are as people. And we gotta work as, as equally as hard to regain the majesty of who we are, the beauty, the, the, the magnificence. You know, I don't wanna preach about it, but that's why I take it so serious. Because for 400 years, people worked diligently hard, wrote books and did lectures and did tests and experiments and operations on us to diminish us. And so if you, all of a sudden, I found a place of power, Kaus. All of a sudden, on the stage, people thought I was special. I'm a kid from a rooming house in Lackawanna, New York. And all of a sudden, everybody wanted yeah. to talk to me, and people wanted to interview me, and people said, this guy is something special. And they put a microphone in my mouth, and I had a choice. Either just go along, or either take this as an opportunity to build something. And that's why when I do August. In August, I had the same mission, a similar mission. We talked about it personally. So that's why I'm so hard on them. That's why I don't let them off the hook because I want them, my actors, my designers, everyone to realize there's a purpose here. This is not entertainment without enlightenment. And so I'm gonna work as hard to my dying day to, to, to regain, to restore the glory. You dig what I'm saying? So anyway, I, I okay, do. Ruben said his preaching thing, so all right. <laughs> you, you no, but that's why I wanted to talk to you because, the, you know, these are the things that people want to hear from you because you speak it so, um, you speak the truth so well and you're not, you're so clear about it. You have clarity when it comes to these things. You know, we talked. Let me ask a question about when I read a script. When I read a script first, I read it as an audience member. I read mm -hmm. it as somebody, is it an interesting story? And what, that's the way I approach it and I find myself in the play. I start, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm going to read it as an audience member. Next thing you know, I'm reading every role. I'm every, I'm every character, women, men, child, I'm the dog, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the monkey out in the hallway, it doesn't matter. I'm going to read everything. 
because I want because that's where you find I find my joy. It's what I've done my whole life. But I don't direct it as soon as I read it, but I do visualize it. And if I can get a, a pretty clear visual of it, then it's, it's my play. If I have no idea, I say, I don't know what this is, then it's really not my play. I can't force myself into the play. It has to, it has to I have to respond to it intellectually, emotionally, and uh, uh, artistically. Mm -hmm. And when you say visualize, you're talking the whole picture. What does it look like on the stage? Who are the actors who are embodying it? What does it sound like? All of those things coming no, together. No, no, that's that would... too far. I, I just so, see it. So I see tell it. me more about that. I'll see a play and I'll say, you know what? You know, this is deeper than this. This is more complicated. Or this should be real simplified. Mm -hmm. Or this is real life. Mm -hmm. Or I could do this just with a, a cello and a piano, and a great, great lighting scheme, and uh, uh, actors just moving around in the dark, going to places and do it with light. You know, and right, right. I see it. And then all of us, but that's not what it ends up being. That ends up being the beginning that I saw something right. that inspired me. And then I right. start bringing these incredible people in the room. Right. I start right. bringing right. in David Gallo and Jane Cox and Tony Leslie James and Karen Perry. And, and I start bringing in uh, 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 Rob Cap and Darren West. You know, I start bringing Bill Sims Jr. in. And that's when it really, the vision gets like, Ying! because I have, <laughs> I, I, I sell them what I saw, man, I see this play yeah. and blah, 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 blah. And then they bring this extraordinary art artistry to it. And the thing, right. the house just gets firmer and stronger because I have this house that I, that I this is the house we're going in. And they'd be mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's a cool house, but uh, maybe this should be that high or over there or brick and not mm -hmm. wood. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it's the collective that makes it. You know, it, directors, you know, some directors like to feel that, you know, they were the end all and, and they made it happen. No, no. We're that person that we get everybody in the room to trust that they will make the best decision for the event for all of us. Mm -hmm. But me, in the way I direct, informed by everyone in that room, mm -hmm. the makeup lady, the hair lady, or guy, uh, uh, you, my, my artistic right. directors, my, my company manager, I, I want to know. I mean, I, I talk to the ushers. I come in and talk right. to the ushers. I, and I remember because that. Absolutely. We're all invested. When I go to the when I go to the Freedmen now, I get hugs all down the aisle. Je Jeannie just go take a seat because I'm hugging the ushers, I'm hugging <laughs> the house manager. You know, I'm at the box office, I'm hugging the ticket. You know, it's, it's like because it's it's the thing. And I said this to 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 my kids, Lily and Trey, who are actors as well. The difference in being in the theater is you create these little families, mm -hmm. and I've created a hundred more little families, and in each of those families. I found at least one lifelong friend. Whether I talk mm -hmm. to him all the time or not, I know that's my cat and, or my gal. And if I see that person uh, at the Met Opera opening, we're making it across, you know, because we're, we're right. family. And that's the thing about theater. I've done 40 some movies and I can name, I mean, I can count on one hand how many real friends in the 40 or 50 movies I've done. But over a hundred that's about. Do you think that's also about, or maybe it's mostly about the intensity of the time and the experience? Do you think there's, as a, as a, particularly as a director, you know, with the with the artists who are involved, it's a smaller group with a longer exposure for a more intense period of time. Or do you think it's about the art form, um, or maybe it's a combination of both? The difference between making a family uh, in theater and not in film or television. Well, you know, we're not coming in just to do a piece of it. Mm -hmm. When you do a play, you're coming to do the whole play, even if you have a smaller role. You're mm -hmm. coming in to do the whole play. You're in mm -hmm. that three weeks rehearsal, four weeks rehearsal, three and a half weeks, whatever it is, as a family. And, and right. you know, until I get going well, I don't let people off. I don't care if you got one yeah. scene. We're all at the table. We're going to break bread together. We're going to talk. I want to hear your ideas about this. I want to hear what you think about it. You are a part of this. You're not just a cog in the machine. You are the machine. Everybody in that room is the machine. Right. So, so right. I want to right. create that and everything gets worked out in that room. Uh, we have to develop a trust that, that, that you know, no matter what happens, where you lean and where you fall is right next to you because mm -hmm. you're never going to hit the ground. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, it, and it's the process. That, the, the, now, some directors are not like that. They start off from the beginning. You go in this room, you go in that room. Uh, I don't need y'all for the first week. No, I, don't, I can't, I can't, uh, right. I don't understand that. Because it's not I, your style. I'm not taking advantage of what I'm given. I'm given an opportunity to bring these extraordinary people together, that God made poets, that they made, he made artists, she, God, mm -hmm. whatever that is, made us mm -hmm. poets. I call mm -hmm. us poets, artists. 
And so why I would be remiss if I didn't say, come on, y'all, let's get in the same room. <laughs> you know, well, let's talk about that with Jitney for a second. And we're going to look at a, a, a picture of the cast here from our from our opening night, because it was an incredible ensemble of actors. Um, and, you know, you can see here you've got, you know, uh, Andre Holland, John Douglas Thompson, Ray Anthony Thomas, Cara Patterson, Anthony Chisholm, Old Chis, Michael Potts, Harvey Blanks, Keith Randolph Smith, Brandon Dearden. I mean, they were an incredibly tight knit family once we got them together. But you as the director with, you know, your, your home at MTC singled out each individual actor and said, that's the perfect person for that role. And I guess let's get back to you and I talking. How, how, what is that casting process like for you? How, you know, what are you looking for? How do you know? Uh, do you have experiences with some of these actors and you know that they're perfect for it? Talk to me just a little bit about that. And then of course, we'll stop talking and watch a little bit of the, a scene and talk a little bit about that. But I, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, also talk about the touring company, which, you know, uh, extraordinary. I mean, yeah. <laughs> extraordinary, you know, but the thing is, the first thing I'm, you know, talent is not what I'm looking for. Talent is everywhere. You come, when you done make a, you made a decision from wherever you came from, whether it's Saginaw or, or, or Indianapolis or, or, or Bakersfield, and you come to New York to be an actor, you've already, you better have some talent. You, you're committed right. already. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not looking for talent as much as I'm looking for the right fit in the room with me, with the work, and with the group, the collective. I gotta look around and see who's gonna take care of who, who's gonna listen, who's gonna also inform me. You know, uh, where's the, pa if, if you're not as serious as I am about it, then you're in the wrong room. Because mm -hmm. I, can, I can be too much. Because it, I, it matters that much to me. And if it right. doesn't matter that much to you, you're in the wrong room. So right. I want to, I feel that out and, and, I, and, I, and I try to find out a lot of things I can teach you or, or, or loan you or lend you or guide you to about August's style, about the mm -hmm. style of August Wilson's work. But other things I can't teach you, I can't teach you generosity and grace. Mm -hmm. I can't teach. So I'm looking for that in my actors. And I'm also looking for an extraordinary uh, 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 skill level. Talent is there. This is New York City. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. You know, it ain't yeah. like you can throw a rocket into talent because there's some bloopers. But once you get past... <laughs> an incredible casting director, uh, uh, an incredible artistic director in, in your group and in, in your writers and stuff, and, and, you, and you're in that number that come in the room. It's, 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 we're not throwing stones at the wall. We, these yeah. are the people that can, are. Yeah. and so then I, I sit there and I, and, I, and I balance the room the way, the, the way you would wish your family could be. Right. Right. Who's the mess up? Who's the jokester? Who's the quiet <laughs> one? You know, you take and, and they all have different personalities. Who's the philosopher? Okay. Who, you know, who, you know, and I talk to them. I give each individual their, I, I talk to them as individuals. You know, I give group notes, but like mm -hmm. Cheers is a senior member of our cast. Cheers has been around, you know, Cheers has developed this role. So when I give Cheers, you know, sometimes if, 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 I get on Cheers harder than anybody. Like I'll go put my hands on Chiz's knee and just lean into his face and say something mm -hmm. to him that nobody else can hear. And me and Chiz mm -hmm. go, okay, okay, all right, all right. All right, all right. <laughs> you know, and it's, yeah. it's something that I don't, I'm not trying to embarrass, I'm not trying to, but yeah. it's something I need to penetrate to him. Just look at, you know, like, like one, one day Chiz was, was taking it easy. And uh, I could tell you he was taking it easy because he was messing up lines. Sometimes he was kind of like not focused. And I just went and put my hands on his leg. I said, Chiz, what are you doing? You better than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, okay, we we watch it. We depending on you. You the leader. And I walked off. We went through that run through that night. I was like, God, dog. I mean, yeah. he was like, okay, Rube, yeah. I'm gonna show you something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's, he had something to prove after that. And you know, you know, when you take that whole cast, you could, I'm not gonna sing them all out. We'd be here forever because no, they no, all no, need no. every actor needs certain specific things, not for motivation. They're motivated because they're there but it's guidance to get to right. the most appropriate results that we want to have the most dynamic event that we're creating. And they well, all, and they, you take your time and, and you look at them in the eye and you talk to them. You don't speak to them in general generalities, generals. Right. Speak to them right. in specifics or well, in spe guidance. Should we, should we watch a little clip and then uh, on the other side of the clip, we can talk a little bit. Uh, what you said is, um, 
is true of your directing style, and then maybe we can talk in a bit more specifics after we watch a little uh, a clip from Jitney. Uh, we talked, Ruben, you and I, that this doesn't really need any setup. It, it, you know, it stands up on its own. It's a beautiful scene. So let's watch a little. Ruben and I will disappear, allow you all to watch. We won't talk over the scene. We'll come back and we'll chat a little bit about what we've just watched. You want right here. I want to see you. You didn't come home last night. Yeah, what for, huh? You hear me? What I'm coming home for being inside, you might not be there. Where'd you go? But you care about where I went. I stayed here if you gotta know. I slept on the couch. What I'm gonna come home for if you making all them stupid accusations? I ain't made no accusations. I just said I knew about you and Peaches. Mm -hmm. Somebody tell you they seen your sister in my car and you jumped to conclusion. You, you, you don't know what I'm doing. You're right. I don't know what you're doing. That's what I'm saying. It ain't like you ain't got no track record. If I remember correctly, you was leading the parade. I'm here. That should be enough. If I ain't want to be here, I'd be somewhere else. Why can't you just take that? Because it's not enough. I don't want somebody that think just because they dare, that's enough. They don't have to do nothing else. I want somebody who's going to share with me, not hide things from me. You want to know what I was hiding from you? I'll tell you. I've been hustling, working day and night while you accuse me of running the streets. And all I'm doing is trying to save enough money so I can buy a house. So you and Jesse have someplace decent to live. I asked Peaches if she would go with me to look at houses because I wanted to surprise you. I wanted to pull a truck up to the house and say, come on, baby, we move. Drive on out to Penn Hills, pull that truck up in front of one of them houses and say, this is yours. This is your house, baby. That's what she was hiding from. That's why Turnbo seen her riding in my car. The time I found the house and I come up $150 short from closing the deal, I come and took the $80 out the drunk. A house? A house, Darnell? You bought a house without me? I wanted to surprise you. You gonna surprise me with a house? <laughs> Don't do that. A new TV, maybe. A stereo, a couch, a refrigerator. Okay, but... You always saying you don't want to live your whole life in a project. Darnell, you ain't bought no house without me. How many times in your life do you get to pick out a house? Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait till you see. Now, it's real nice. It's all on one floor. It's got a, a, a basement, like a little den. We can put the TV down there. <laughs> I told myself, we're going to like this. Wait till you see I bought her a house. No, you bought a den for Darnell. That's what you did. <laughs> Sit down there and watch your football game. <laughs> but what about the kitchen? The bathroom? How many windows does it have in the bedroom? Is that some place for Jesse to play? How much closet space does it have? You can't just surprise me with a house and I'm supposed to say, oh, Darnell, that's nice. It's uh, a little bit of a tease to only have a couple of minutes of that scene in that show. We'll come back to watch the second half of that scene a little later. Uh, I gotta tell you, see, just watching even just footage from that show makes me yearn for it again. It's so beautiful and, and the work that you did was so great. Um, you can see though, like we were talking about. You should have been on Broadway for a year. I, 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 I feel you, nobody would disagree with that. No, it, it was uh, so beautiful. Let me ask you, like we, we were watching that show, watching that clip and we could see when the camera went back, the, the, the totality of that set, the texture, the detail. Um, and I think that's part of what you were talking about. You know, your designers are building this world and they're telling you maybe we can put this door here and move it here. And you're saying, yes, but I need a sign that has the rules and maybe this fridge should be on a cinder block. That collaboration, that's that's the creative process for you, right? I mean, that's, that's, yes. that's the... Well, you know, you, you, you got David Gallo's set, uh, amazing set. And, and the thing is about Gallo, he's as into making it authentic as I am, or more so. Mm -hmm. He's got mm -hmm. photos and pictures and history. And, and so, and then I get even, and then I take it another notch, I get even more specific. I need two pictures of Charlie Burley. That's, <laughs> there's nothing of Charlie Burley up in here. He said, well, we, I got one coming. I said, I want two. I said, at least one Clemente and a Martin Luther King. And he said, well, it should be over here if you have a Martin Luther King. You know what I'm saying? Where's the <laughs> Jet Swimsuit calendar? He said, oh, that's over there. You know, so, and, and then I'll say, nothing should be in the room that's not useful. These men are useful men. 
So they've all had another career or they're all doing something else even now while they're driving jitneys. So there right. should be tools that are useful and other things. There should be things that maybe somebody's painting. There should be uh, lights and things to change oil and uh, uh, things, paintbrushes, you know. So we and are very the, specific the about it. And the beauty Nothing's of it is stage. you do... No, not by accident. Nothing's on that stage by accident at all. Every single thing. It, yeah. I remember the process. I remember the process very well. I, like, um, I walk and in and say the, 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 that should be a little bit darker and, and I think the areas aren't clear enough. Well, what, what about the numbers for the price for the areas? No, the price could be more faded, but the, but the, the, the areas right. have to be more defined. You know, right. so that right. kind of right. meticulous anal kind of directing that, that really makes right. things really specific and beautiful. But, but, but the beauty of it, Ruben, is, is that work is, is necessary and that work helps deliver the play in such a way. But in a scene like what we just watched, it sort of disappears for a moment because what you're focused on is the relationship between two characters, the dialogue, the work that they've done as brilliant actors to bring those characters to life, that, that conflict to life, and the work that you've done in getting the, the, the truth out of them and the movement on the stage as they go around each other. So all that, all that stuff is in supporting each other. When you're in the rehearsal room or when you're in, in, in the theater, depending on the process, are you constantly fine tuning and tinkering? Do you, do you, start, direct, do you start directing immediately or do you let actors, let's talk about that scene, do you let Andre and Cara just do what they know how to do and then keep them if you will, can I steal it in their lane? No. Like you tell me. No, I start, I start inspiring. I want to inspire everybody in the room first and see what bursts out of them. I have to give them, when you have actors this incredible, you have to give them space to be inventive and, and to be, uh, uh, find authenticity in, in who and what that means in their life. You don't come, you know, that's the biggest mistake to me. And I ain't the end all say all directors, I understand that. You know, I understand my, who I am though and I understand how I work. But, but what I need is their contribution wholeheartedly, in, intelligent, in, intelligently and, and emotionally. So the only way I'm gonna get that if I, is if I give them space. Then I have to refine. I understand that part of my job too, to refine right. and be clear of what purpose is. Sometimes an actor will go for, for things that make them look good and, and you really don't need them to look good right then. Mm -hmm. so, so you have to convince them to trust the fact that even though they're not looking their best, I don't mean physically, they might not look like a good person at that point. It's okay because we're all right. redeemable. But first of all, I have to be able to give them enough space to bring me their best. I, I want the fatty calf. I don't you know, I want, <laughs> I want the best you have. And the only way that I can get that or demand that or request that is to give the best I have. And part yeah. of the best I have is to be generous enough to give them space. But then I have to hone it. Like these actors are extraordinary. If you, if you, if you, if you watch and it, the whole cast, but when you watch Cara in, in uh, Andre, there's never a distraction. There's never a look off. Even if you turn your back, your focus is there. When Andre, well, I, I, you know, he walks this way, but his whole direct, everything he meant, his heart and soul was going that way. And Kara, when, she, when Kara pinned him, she never took her eyes off him, Holly, the whole time. Because well, it's interesting you say soul. that because the second half of this scene, which I'd love to, to look at um, uh, with everyone, the second half of this scene is really, a, it's a beautiful, you know, three, three minute roller coaster of like, of exactly what you're talking about, of engage, disengage, engage, disengage. What what we thought would be interesting to those watching would be, because August August's writing was so intentful uh, and so intentional, I should say. Every word, every punctuation, uh, every contraction or not. I mean, it, 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 I think we thought it would be interesting to watch this scene with the text rolling along the bottom. So you'll That's be able great. to watch. Uh, well, you'll be able to watch Car and Andre perform this beautiful scene, but at the bottom, you're going to watch the script roll along, and you can see how word for word they're delivering. But it comes to life; it's not just words; it's actual meaning. So, um, which is partly uh, praise to them, but also partly praise to the director and, the, and ultimately to the writer as well. So I'll we'll just. I tell you this, Kyle. Yeah. Like, like sometime if, if, if an actor would throw a line or change a line, and I know what they change because I'm, I'm in the book real heavy. I don't <laughs> say that's the wrong line. I'll, I'll tell. I'll say, wait a minute, that didn't sound right. What? Some, what was off there? Something was off. There. Was that the? And then they'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I dropped the the or the, the, the butt or, right. or. Anyway, let's right. see it. Man. Let's see it. Yeah, we'll roll it. We'll disappear for a little bit. We'll watch and then we'll come back and chat. I should also say before we roll. Um, 
there is a question and answer button at the bottom for our participants. If anyone wants to pose any questions, we'll take a look at those a little later when we come back from this clip and we'll answer as many questions as we can, as we can with the time permitted. So I'll disappear, we'll watch the second half of the scene. I told myself Rita gonna like this. Wait, did she see I bought her a house? No, you bought a den for Darnell. That's what you did. <laughs> so you can sit down there and watch your football games. But what about the kitchen? The bathroom? How many windows does it have in the bedroom? Is that some place for Jesse to play? How much closet space does it have? You can't just surprise me with a house. And I'm supposed to say, oh, Darnell, that's nice. At one time I would have, but I'm not 17 no more. I have responsibilities. I want to know if they have a hookup for a wash and dryer, because I got to wash Jesse clothes. I want to know if they have a yard, and do it have a fence, and how far Jesse has to go to school. I ain't thinking about where to put the TV. That's not what's important to me. And you're supposed to know, Darnell. You're supposed to know what's important to me, like I'm supposed to know what's important to you. I'm not asking you to do it by yourself. I'm here with you. We in this together. See, house or no house, we still ain't got the food money. But if you had come and told me, if you had shared that with me, we could have went to my mother, we could have got the $80 for the house and still had money for food. You just did it all wrong, Darnell. I mean, you did the right thing, but you did it wrong. No matter what I do, it's gonna come out wrong with you. That's why you jump to conclusions. That's why you accuse me of running around with peaches. You can't look and see that I quit going to parties all the time. That I quit running with Babe Brown and Earl. That I quit chasing women. You, you just look at me and see the old Darnell. Now, if you can't change the way you look at me, I may as well surrender now. I can't beat your memory of who I was if you can't see I changed. Now, I go out here and I work like a dog to try and do something nice for you, but no matter what I do, I can't never do it right because all you see is the way I used to be. You don't see the new Darnell. You don't see I've changed. I know people change, but I know they can slip back too. No, Rena, people believe what they want to believe. What they set up in their mind to believe. Now, I know what it looked like when I was gone all the time and not bringing home no money, but you could have noticed that I was tired. You could have said, you know, Darnell ain't talking too much because he tired. You could have noticed that I didn't act like somebody running the streets. That I ain't come home smelling like alcohol and perfume. That I didn't dress like somebody running the streets. If you had bought it all the way through, you would have noticed how excited I was when I got that UPS job. How I asked you if I could take it. You would have noticed that I've been planning things. I wasn't running around here drinking beer and, and, and playing cards. How I get up early on Sunday and go out to the airport to try to make a few extra dollars before the Jimmy station over, but you ain't seen all that. Oh, you still working off your memory, but the past is over and done with. I'm thinking about the future. She ain't the only one think about Jesse. That's why I'm trying to do something different. That's why I'm trying to buy a house. Now, maybe I should have told you about the house. Yeah, well, maybe I did do it all wrong. But I done it. Try to show you I love you. What I get for you. Okay, Daniel. You right. I could have seen all that. But what you ain't looking at is I changed too. We are both different people than we were than when we first fell in love. I still love you, Darnell, but love can only go so far. When we were in high school, that was enough. That was the world. That was everything. <laughs> but it ain't everything no more. I don't have all the answers. Sometimes I don't even have the right questions, but I do know it takes two to find them. All I know is we got somebody, a little two-year-old boy, counting on us. No, but I know that when you put your hand in mine, you gotta say, Darnell's not gonna let me down. He loves me. Look, I don't, I don't wanna make 
make no more mistakes in life. I don't want to do nothing to mess this up. I don't want to get old and be talking about, I had me this little old gal one time, and I ain't seen her in 22 years. <laughs> If that's not what you want, then you got to let me know, Dr. If we don't know what's important to one another and learn to share that, then we can't make it. We can't make it with each other. I want you, baby. Now, I told you that. You're already my pride. I want you to be my joy. Because ain't but one thing I've done wrong. Stay away from you one night too long. What is house at? Got a real nice bedroom. <laughs> oh yeah? Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see it. Where my boy? At my mother's. I gotta go to my accounting class. You need a ride. I walk. I need to exercise. Oh, let me give you a ride. I don't wanna let you out of my sight. Matter of fact, <laughs> you might have to miss that accounting class. <laughs> You got something to teach me? Hey, 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 hey. You all got to take that home. It's just an unbelievable scene. Uh, it's just terrific. Oh, man. Um, that brings me so much joy. I know. And, and, and I have to say, I know I said it before the clip, but that that roller coaster in, in just a few minutes that we watch two human beings go on, right? I mean, at each other, forgiving each other, maybe even changing their opinion mid, mid scene, realizing they're listening, they're hearing, they're, uh, it's such a beauty to, to both hear August's writing in that way and then see Cara and Andre just deliver it so flawlessly. It's really remarkable. It's, it's, it's you know, that scene, there's not a weak person in that scene. There's two powerful people who are fighting for something that's important to them. And that thing is honesty and trust in a relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, I often talk to them in that scene about what's most important is keeping your family together. And the people in the audience, no matter what color they are, can relate to that, whether they can relate to a young brother trying to scuffling with the wrestling with the world in America, trying to make it, or a young sister, you're trying to get her, her education, raise her child, you know, whatever they can relate to, what they can relate to definitively is family. A, a, a young couple trying to keep their family strong and together, but they need trust and understanding. So that's what they're fighting for, not respect from one to the other, but understanding. How do we make this work? She said, we, we, we came in. And the other thing that people always talk about the, how weak the women are in August Wilson. I've seen this play done before many different times. You know, and I told her, I said, you decide how much you let him kiss you and win. That's why she, he, he went in with the kiss on her. She pushed him back and then decided, you know, this is my man. This is my situation. Let me show him this is how much I love you. Bam. And then she laid it on and pushed him back. Said, now nah, I got you right. You know, now you know my power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, not that. only in the grab and the kiss, but who I am, how I can handle my situation, where this house at. And then he took back power, Penn Hills. Oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Um, I want to remind everyone the question and answer, uh, the Q and A tab at the bottom. Feel free to submit some questions there. Um, Ruben, I'd love to just go through a couple of these and ask you a few that have come up over the course of this. Um, something uh, that's interesting to to talk about is you you will someone asks you know that August writes about close knit and intimate communities in in ensemble pieces like Jitney, but also in all of his work. And you talk about developing such a close knit family in the theatrical experience. How do you facilitate that feeling in a rehearsal room with actors who may not know each other uh, or may not be familiar with each other? What is your style or your technique to create that trust and create that familial bond 
throughout the course of the process, or maybe it's from the start. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about that? It's always from the start. It's always we. You know, mm -hmm. we have to remember uh, we've always uh, have had to make our communities. We always had to make, as I say in Lackawanna Blues, our heaven on earth. So we mm -hmm. always found a way to deal because the outside world always pushed in on us. So we had to come together. We didn't always had to like each other. We always had different personalities, but we always had to support and be there as the bond, as the wall, as the village. And so I immediately create the village from when we introduce ourselves. I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, when actors get to a certain level of, of, of their craft, of their skill, they want to be amenable to the other people in the room. They want to be part of the village. They're not trying to stand out. This is not a movie where somebody's trailers is 50 feet and somebody is in the honey wagon. No, this is a play. We all gonna share whatever we have and when cake comes in, all of us is eating. Like August <laughs> used to say, everybody in the bed, everybody on the floor. You know, so whatever one has, everyone has. If somebody is a little older, they can get to the dressing room or, or been in it long, they can get the dressing room here. But it goes from there. A community is, is equal. You have elders and you have younger people and you have, but it's all generosity. I said that early in this conversation, you can't teach mm -hmm. grace and generosity you know, that's what you invite into your room. That, that's already that's there. Right. That's who these people were raised as. Right. Uh, it's well said. And also, I think, you know, in my experience as well, I, I've seen there's a, an excitement and a, almost a giddiness at the first rehearsal uh, to all come together to meet people you may not know or to re rekindle old relationships. It, it's part of the beauty of the art form, frankly, and part of the beauty of the artists is this openness and willingness to to, to trust each other almost irresponsibly to a certain extent. It feels like it shouldn't be that uh, trusting, but it is because it's a safe space. But it, it is almost, led by the director. And it always almost brings me to tears thinking that, that I won't have that room or we won't have that room, none of us for a while. That first day when you come in and you're looking for, there's so-and-so, you know, there's Cheers, there's Potts, yeah. there's JDT, there's Brandon. You know, y'all, yeah. they be looking for each other. I, I have to make my way in to get my hugs, you know, because <laughs> they, 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 it's just, it's just, it'll be back. We're going to do that again, you know. We gonna Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me ask you a little bit about as you work on uh, pieces, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, August pieces, but just in general, are you spending time with the actors and with the writer uh, investigating sort of backstory, investigating character history, trying to understand what's leading characters to this moment that we're seeing them in the play? Are you, what is that relationship like for you as a director with either the writer or the actors as you start to unpack where this character has come from that informs the moment that we're watching? Well, character study is actor's work. I don't get in, in the way of the actor's work. Uh, dramaturgy is my work, my work in my mm -hmm. room. My, my associate who was a Woye Tempo, amazing, amazing director in her own right. Here, here. But she um, uh, did a lot of my dramaturgy. You had people on staff doing dramaturgy. And also we bring in our experiences. Sometimes we get together and I just say, tell me something interesting happened today on the way to work. And the, the actor's uh, 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 a keen observation of life is amazing. And sometimes, or I'll say, tell me something that somebody made you mad on the train today. And somebody, or I'll say, you know, we, we just, then at the end of every rehearsal, we come together and we hold hands and we breathe together. We look at each other and it's not unique to my rehearsal room, but it, it, it you know, the, ma the, the magic of that moment is, is the moment when we all just, no matter what happened in that day, we come and leave as one. Mm -hmm. We leave as, the, this is Jitney. And that's what the last thing I say, whatever play it is, if it's Dominique Morrison's skeleton crew, if it's Jitney, if it's Cabin in the Sky, whatever it is, we hold right. hands and I let everybody know we say together, this is August Wilson's, and they scream Jitney, and we clap, and we hug, and they act like they don't want to leave, and they know they got to go home. Why <laughs> yeah, <more>. exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let me ask you a, a, a question that may be, it, it may be impossible to answer briefly, because it's a, it, it, it could go on, on a, it's a big question, but I, I'm curious specifically about uh, your, your thoughts on this. So with August Wilson, his plays put the, frankly, the authentic, the everyday life of African Americans on stage, which honestly was something that was rarely presented like that before him. Um, what is it like when you're directing August's work, the responsibility you may feel, um, and also how do you make audiences aware that while this is uniquely the story of an African American experience, it's a story about humans. And it's incredibly accessible in that way. Do you find yourself thinking about that as a director when you're working on August's work? 
Everything contained in human life is contained in the African community. Ain't nothing that can happen in Europe, mm -hmm. China, Ghana, or, or Australia that don't happen in the black community. The difference is white people don't think of that. They don't think right. that we want the same things everybody has. We're just human. You know, and way before, you know, when it was free world trade, there were Africans in Venice and Chinese people in uh, Ethiopia and, you know, uh, 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 Middle Eastern people in, uh, in, in Ireland, because everybody just went everywhere to reap the benefits of that place and bring the riches from their places. America is what, where we got like y'all over here, he's over here, there's persons over there, uh, and don't come over here. Right. And so what I love about August's work so much is that he takes the common man and lets you experience the royalty in his blood. <laughs> the dignity, the integrity of that's in his blood, in his DNA, because we going way back, we're going to go like past the city of bones to universities in Timbuktu, to, to the scrolls in, in, in Ethiopia and Somalia and Egypt and right. the educators and the poets. And I, in my piano lesson, that signature theater, when I carved, had that piano carved um, within fine art, similar to the, 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 those, those bronzes in Benin way before, you know, so that we had fine artists. We, we aren't just folk artists. We don't just yeah, yeah. go paint up against the wall and, you know, we actually have fine artists. So I decided to make the piano fine art. Yeah. And everybody, well, how could a slave carve like that? Well, he's descended from the finest carvers that came out of Benin in 450, you know, so, so yes, that's in his blood. It was revealed when he had the assignment, carve this piano for me. Right, right. Oh, you don't know what you just asked me to do. You dig what I'm saying? So I why do we always, uh, not always, but some directors go for the, the, the basic and the, 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 the least common denominator and not the finest. Uh, when I directed my Rainey's Black Bottom, I had uh, uh, Bill Sims and Kenny Rampton uh, from um, uh, Winton Marsalis' Lincoln Center, the Jazz and Lincoln Center Orchestra. That's who were my musicians because Ma Rainey had Fletcher Henderson, Cindy Bechet, and, 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 and Louis Armstrong in her band. So why would I have actors on stage playing bomb, bomb, bomb? So that's the way you want to direct it? I've seen those right. plays and enjoyed them. But for my, when, I'm, when Brandon and them started playing and, 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 and Harvey, <laughs> you heard that band, you were like, them dudes is bad because if you do the research, the best musicians in, in America that were black played with Ma Rainey because she paid three times more than anybody else. Everybody else paid $5 for a recording session. Ma Rainey played 15. Wow. Yep. And yep. she cooked for you. So, you know, if you decide you want to make the actors learn, learn to pay this guy, bless you. And some actors can do it decently. Yeah. But why am I spending all my time doing that when there's so much more wonderful stuff and I can make the music sound like Ma made it? But then talk to me about Canewell. Talk to me about your Canewell. I mean, you're not a musician, but you are now. Well, that's what some people say. I mean, I, <laughs> I, like, I, like, to, I like to, you know, play a little bit, you know, but uh, that's the kind but of what actor. was that like for you, honestly? What was that like for you? Did you know anything about playing the harmonica? I, I had messed around with it because I came right. up in a house that people played blues every weekend. Mr. Tom Wright was down the street playing his guitar, Piedmont Blues, and, and, and Claiborne McClatchett was playing gut bucket Mississippi Memphis kind of uh, New Orleans real deep New Orleans blues and stuff so um, it was always around so I had a little harmonica I was fiddling with it but I didn't know how to play it you know right. not really nothing you just taught yourself well I had some help from some people that would tell me things but they don't like show you they say things yeah. like because because musicians can be boy they could be up there he was like <laughs> learn how to do this and then call me <laughs> You know, so you just oh, just like that, just like that. Oh, it's no big deal, no big deal. <laughs> you know, it's it's you get out of it what you put into it. You know, when I was putting, I was going to to every blues club in Chicago after rehearsal. I'd have me something to eat, and I would start in the blues clubs with my buddy Matthew Scholar, who was my Chicago guy, and he took me to every. And he's a one of the greatest harmonica players living today. 
you take me to every blue. We're going to go over to uh, Blue Chicago. Now we're going to go to Chicago Blues. Now we're going to go over to Roses. Now we're going to go over to the Kingston Mine. And 2.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock, I would stumble into my apartment, get me about four hours sleep, be at rehearsal with just a little more knowledge about the harp. Yep, yep. What not a lesson. Harp? Not a lesson. It's not like you went to a harmonica teacher. You were Matt, just taking it in. Matthew would give me some lessons, but you can't give a person lessons with things that he's hiding in his mouth. You right, just right, make right. this sound. And then call me. <laughs> if I had him folded the wrong, he would slap my hand. Not that hand, it's got to be the other hand. I said, why are you doing that? So he would, he, he, and then occasionally he would say, don't put the harmonica down, you're getting spit in it, keep it up. Oh, wow, you don't yeah. wobble like, you don't wobble like this. You wobble like this. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, like a dog shaking water off his back. <laughs> that was the lessons they would give me. And then Amazing. I had to, and he said, the best lesson is to put it in your mouth, keep on finding notes that sound good to you. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of a, I got to tell you, it's, uh, it's sort of an analogy, it's an analogy for your career, frankly. I, I don't mean that dismissively. I mean, like, you just keep, tr you know, you know what you know how to do, and you keep trying new things, you know, whether you're directing, you're writing, you're producing, you're directing television, you're just constantly, if you will, you've got it in your mouth, and you just keep, keep going. You well, you know, going. you have to, you have to, you have to decide, are you going to let the world tell you who you are, or are you going to tell the world who you are? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell the world who I am, you know, and, and, and they're going to constantly paint and have lower expectations to me, but you can't rise to lower expectations. You got to have high expectations. And the only way that you can achieve them is by working your butt off. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, people can be better at me than things, but you can't work harder than me. Yeah. I'm not going to let that happen. You can be better at me, you, but you're going to get it. You know, but when it comes to acting and writing and directing, uh, I said earlier on in this conversation, no time to squander. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that is evident that that is your motto to live by. Absolutely. I guess uh, one last thing I'd want to ask you is with that in mind, do you have clarity? And I don't suspect that you do. And if you do share it with all of us on what, how we come out the other side of, of where we are right now. You know, it, it, it's the, the only thing that I really know, because uh, nobody knows anything. And every day we turn on TV and look at the paper to try to find out something more. The only thing I know is that, that, we all want to get back. So we're all working hard to get back. We'll never come back the same way. But we will come back when we're informed and we have a certain comfort level on what's possible. No one's jumping into anything unless they're totally foolish, uncomfortably. I don't have to wait for perfection to go right. into the room. They got a shot. They got a cure. They got this. They got six times testing. They got blah, 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 blah. That ain't never, we didn't have that from the jump screen. Right. We didn't have a utopia from the beginning in our business. But we have to get to a place where we know that we'll be able to take, take care of our families, do our art, and come home safely and take care of everybody in that theater. Because the audiences have to have a comfort level the same way we have to have a comfort level. And That's we're right. going to make an agreement that I'm going to get on stage and bear my soul with this, uh, these other actors on this stage and trust them because of the information I have. They have been tested. There is a treatment if we do get sick. We mm -hmm. will shut down and we have to shut down. But also you know that there's a treatment. You have been tested. You're wearing your mask. I'm comfortable with you. You're comfortable with me, then let's do something. But mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to happen until we all have agreed that we're, we feel comfortable enough to take a chance because it's going to be a leap. That mm -hmm. first time we come into the theater is going to be a leap. And then we're going to need plays that, that, that I think are the balm and the healing. Plays like the Lackawanna Blues, you know, which is a healing, which is a balm. And I, yeah, and I put it out there that way, but it's a play about a community taking, a woman taking care of a community and a community taking care of her and everybody right. in that community being embraced. We have to take care of each other. Now yeah. people realize that we're the same. Corona don't know black or white. <laughs> We're all the same. And so we should all have the respect and the dignity and the opportunity to help heal each other, to be yeah, together I, and fight this thing, man. It's inspiring, Ruben. I, I, I look forward to that day. I really do. It's, uh, it, whether it's a week away or, or a month away or six months away, I, I know like you that it will be there and, and it will, it'll be a leap, but we'll get there. Um, I, I don't suspect there's much else, but is there anything we didn't talk about that, that was on your mind that you wanted to share with anybody, either about 
you as a director, you as an individual? I think I talked me out. <laughs> the only thing I would like to say, I mean, to the people, they tired of me by now, but I just want to say that I miss everybody. Yeah. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> but. Yeah, I, I feel you. And, and, and it's almost torture to sit looking at each other on a screen knowing that we're alone. I mean, you and I, we're not together, but to, to, to sort of remind ourselves that we can't be together through this format it feels like torture sometimes. And you know me, um, I'm a hugger, man. You know, I'm, I got that I know. Puerto Rican and black blood all boiled up in the air. You know, so I like to hug and, you know, I'm, a, you know, I'm, a, I'm one of them cats, so I miss my hugs and, and, and we gonna get through this thing and then we, we'll come back and let's do our work. You know what I'm saying? I gotta tell you, man, for those of you, I don't expect anyone to know, I, I uh, visited Ruben from afar, maybe what, like a month ago, three weeks ago, from other sides, of, from the other side of the street. Um, just to do a drive by and say hi, and, and I have to say, it took it was so hard for me not to hug you. <laughs> it was so hard not to like just share an embrace or something because it's so in the DNA of who you are and who I am. It was it was hard, man. So I feel you. Um, Ruben, say, I, let me say to all my, all all my Jitney people that are watching, if any of y'all watching, I love y'all. Miss you guys. Soon we'll get together. You know, we we'll get together. Here, here, Ruben. I want to say a huge thank you not only for the time that you've given us now, but the the time that you've given us prior to this with both your work as an actor and a director, particularly with Jitney for MTC. Uh, we feel so lucky to have been able to produce that play with you at the helm, but also for all the work you've put out uh, into the, the world. It, it's meaningful, it's from your heart, and that's evident by how well it uh, comes across the footlights and how well it's received. So thank you very much, we really appreciate it. Thank you, Manhattan Theater Club, you know, after, after 11 years, that one yes that, that uh, you guys gave us to do Jitney meant the world, you know, because 11 it, years it, of no's is hard to take. And that one yes was all I needed. So thank you guys. It, you're very welcome. It was a privilege, true and true. I know that word gets thrown around, but it really was a privilege to, to, to put on that show. To those of you who attended, thank you very much. Uh, we, we are continuing to strive towards a reopening at MTC, just like the rest of the theatrical community. For any support you can give to MTC, we're greatly appreciative. These are tough times for arts institutions. So please keep us in your thoughts. As you